in this uh, segment i will be exploring the idea of old and new the idea of tradition and modernity the idea of discontinuity and continuity or how in visual art there is a constant change there is nothing that really is uh, stagnant or which is going to last for a long time the idea of tradition is not static so you can always go back to a traditional painting pick up something from there and in the process you have a a conversation a dialogue with the other artists who was from some other time some other place and so on so in that sense the old and new is not a fixed position in visual art historically yes but as a creative artist you tend to have a, a constant dialogue between the earlier artists between another artist from your own time or from another uh, uh, historical time and thereby there is a constant churning around there is a constant shift in the way the images are perceived or the language is constantly being uh, shifted further and further into new areas at times it can settle down into a mannerism in the sense there are some artists who decide that this is my area of expertise or this is my style and they will try to work within that there are other artists who are constantly experimenting trying to find new uh, areas of uh, uh, developing their work so in that sense there are many different uh, approaches artists take but one thing is very sure that art is always in a flux there is no uh, settled position there so in this segment i'll be talking about how artists from today are having a conversation with the past and thereby it's a it's a dialogue it is a give and take and when a contemporary artist changes the earlier image or transforms it you not only look at the present day image or present day artist image in a different way you also start looking at the old image in a new way so there are new readings that become possible because of the conversation a work by sudarshan shetty see when we say language the language is a a system that has been built over a period of time it is it is like memory but it's a memory of the the society over a period of time the conventions of how one has to speak what makes a good sentence what is the right word and so on have been established same happens in visual art and when we say tradition tradition is also not so static tradition was again uh, you know over a period of time it's like a memory bank which is there and then you accept some parts of it and you can also reject some part of it and um, if you st start digging deeper and deeper you realize tradition is not a monolith uh, kind of uh, system it is something that uh, keeps changing for example there is a painting in uh, traditional painting in uh, the mysore uh, uh, traditional painting section in the museum it's a yashoda krishna painting but you will see that the artist has used french louis sofa on which the krishna and uh, his mother is sitting and in the back side you will see a, a a a clock which is from some other country because he was seeing them he was seeing those examples around him so it has become a traditional painting but it is not so static so there is a constant shifting and movement even in traditional painting and once you start seeing that you will be able to be alive to what is happening in those uh, systems now sudarshan city has made this it's almost like a metaphor for how the idea of a tradition uh, can be conceived it is made of small pieces which is taken from somewhere else and then we used and rearranged we saw this image of rene magritte in another segment where in the moment of kissing there is a certain amount of secrecy that is uh, still there or there is some an unknowable factor in that relationship so this artist william cobbing has done a performance video 
it becomes even much more uh, evocative because of the material that is used. So it's like a slug fest between two people where uh, it's not an intimate act, but it is something of like a blame game. And uh, so there's a small shift in the image and thereby the meaning got extended or altered and modified. This is the Rembrandt painting. And this artist uses an earlier painting and then try to wrap it up in a different way, as though it is being wrapped in a plastic uh, um, sheet. So there is one layer of already existing image. On that, you overlay another set of images, and thereby you start looking at it in a, a very fresh manner. We saw the tent of uh, Tracy, I mean, where she has uh, named all the lovers she had and how the very personal uh, uh, experience was made into a, a public uh, uh, or, or exhibited in a public domain. This is one of her uh, uh, another work where her entire bed was displayed in the gallery as a work of art, as a proposal of a work of art, as if each of those uh, I know uh, cigarette birds and then uh, uh, alcohol bottles and so on speaks a story of how her personal life is going on and it became like a, a display of that very private uh, uh, life. And then the moment you put up something in a museum, again it, the roles change. It is no more a personal uh, uh, object, it becomes an artwork, it is something, you know, there is an aura around that, you can't go and touch and so on. So these two artists, uh, again, I have spoken about them before. They went on the bed and then they defiled that, that uh, uh, status of artwork that is given to them, given to that particular bed, because it is displayed in the museum. So this, this constant uh, movement between a private uh, object and then you give a art status, move it to a museum, and then it becomes something else. And then that can also be retrieved back and then brought back to an ordinary position. This is a, the original painting by David of Napoleon Bonaparte. The artist Kehinde, he reimagines himself as being the protagonist of that. Because between Europe and uh, Africa, the power relationship was uh, of one of unequal uh, power relations, and they were being enslaved and exploited. So, he used the same image, same kind of position and all, but there is a different kind of story being narrated here. This is uh, Monet, who was an impressionist. Impressionists were interested in capturing that one moment of light that is passing through, which will not be there in the next moment. So they were not interested in painting the physical aspect of the landscape or the still life they saw but they were interested in capturing the light quality or the momentary nature of that um, uh, light which is fleeting through. So they made very quick uh, paintings and sometimes they also made in the same spot they will sit for uh, many hours and each hour or so they would make a different painting because the light was shifting. So they were interested in light and that the, the kind of changing aspects of light. So Vik Muniz has adopted or kind of had a conversation with that and now he has made the kind of painting of the Monet's uh, haystack but he makes them like pixelated image by using a collage uh, technique. This is another painting where the entire painting is very very photo realistic and then he takes up another painting from another artist and then he treats it in a very different way and in the process he alters the way we look at both the earlier artist as well as the, the kind of readings that uh, Vic Muniz brings into it. Normally, we see people doing a landscape, right? Like Jacob or Constable, they studied the landscape and they study how the clouds are being formed. It can also be Van Gogh who kind of imagined the cloud as a, a you know, wave of energy going around. But still, both of them are static. They won't change like how a cloud would change its shape and keeps 
moving and then it vanishes. Like Vikmunis went in aeroplane and then he has uh, drawn the cloud in the sky. So just imagine, you know, instead of drawing the sky on your paper, you go into the sky and then create a drawing of the cloud. So it's a very different kind of, uh, uh, very mischievous uh, kind of approach, but it is also very um, bold. This artist Milde, he has figured out a way of creating an actual cloud in a very small scale uh, way. And then he creates those clouds in uh, galleries, in museums, in railway stations and so on. And those clouds are there for some time and then they, like any other cloud, they evaporate. So it's a very different approach to looking at landscape or bringing an element of landscape into the artwork. And they also are emphasizing the ephemeral quality of the, the natural uh, phenomenon. People like K.G. Subramaniam, they are having a conversation with another tradition. Like this is, there is a, a terracotta uh, making tradition in Rajasthan called Molela. So K.G. Subramaniam studies those uh, uh, tradition and then he adopts the making technique of Molela into his terracotta works. Or he studies the reverse glass painting from Tanjore and then he adopts that technique in his work. So this is also a kind of conversation where you are not taking the content or the image, but you are taking a traditional a making aspect of the, the tradition. Gulam Muhammad Sheikh studied uh, uh, miniature very intensely and then he starts uh, adopting the kind of visual language that the uh, miniatures uh, speak, the flatness, the non-perspective kind of treatment or uh, the kind of color uh, uh, composition or the way the entire uh, um, space is segmented into multiple uh, uh, divisions and then you start putting different images in each one. So all this comes from the language of miniature. And then that is the kind of uh, dialogue that Sheikh is having with an earlier uh, tradition. Vasudev he also paints, but he adopts the technique of the embossing technique which is seen in the temples, on the temple doors. You will see metal, uh, beaten metal uh, relief works that are uh, uh, displayed in South Indian temples. So he, he is using that technique and then he creates his own work. Or he is also using the weaving technique. He collaborates with weavers and then creates that work. So if one is trying to have a conversation with an earlier uh, tradition or an earlier artist. It can be about medium, it can be about content, or it can be about a certain way the artist is using the language uh, in a unique way. Surendran Nair brings a reference to the exotic nature of the Indian sadhus and saints, the levitation, and all the other uh, 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 imaginations we have about the saints and sadhus and then he starts making uh, very humorous kind of uh, imagery around that uh, understanding. So you will see there is a sadhu here and there is also a shoe there. So immediately you are, you are in two different kind of times. There is some part of it which is from another time, another uh, uh, tradition and then this sadhu is also wearing a socks. So you do not know what to do with that kind of contradictory coming together of uh, detailing. Shiva Prasad uh, is an artist from uh, Karnataka. He uh, traveled extensively, he has studied uh, the uh, you know folk, uh, folklore artists and uh, folk art. He meets them and then he uses that uh, knowledge and those images of leather puppets or wooden uh, 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 sculptures in his painting along with another image from another time. This is Dali's uh, Jesus Christ. So he combines them and thereby there is a dialogue between uh, different cultures here. This is the image of Chinnamasta Devi, where the blood that sprouts uh, leads to many other lives and uh, Santosh adopts that, but in a slightly different way. Uh, 
and uh, this is a, a king or a powerful person sitting on the horse and uh, there is also this timer which is going on as if there is something uh, you know going to explode uh, something very uh, you know important is going to happen when those uh, timer starts coming to the right uh, uh, number and because it is constantly moving it also brings in a sense of anxiety we start making the connection with all the hollywood movies where the bomb that uh, you know bomb is ticking and then you are trying to repair it all the connection starts uh, you know seeping into that we saw some works of manjunath kamath uh, earlier the way he remolds uh, the traditional images into new forms and thereby talks about how a traditional memory or traditional uh, image is created in in fragments and how we reconstruct memory or the memory of history and is the way he does it is very um, magical almost because they come together very nicely but also there are many many smaller fragments in it which are uh, which you can recognize as fragments this is the vishwarupa that he has created normally vishwarupa image is seen as one person with uh, you know multiple hands one image of god um, but here it is made up of hundreds of small images coming together so in that sense he breaks down the image but also brings them together because the proximity you can start making the connection between them francis bacon has uh, taken the velasquez painting and then he reinterprets that but in the interpretation of bacon it becomes even more horrific it is more terrifying it's more disturbing all of you are familiar with the painting of last supper vivek vilasini changes the very fundamental image we have of uh, last supper you know last supper in relation to jesus christ or the way those images are uh, presented he brings them to uh, the kerala uh, dressing um, so we start looking at the last supper in very different way now after seeing the uh, vivek vilas in his take on that he has also done a reinterpretation of so this is an animal but if you go closer there are many uh, human figures which are forming that uh, horse this is uh, made in metal so is a similar concept but contemporized and then readopted art is not only bring in elements from the tradition but they also bring uh, elements from visual uh, expressions around them so jean du buffet and basket they look at uh, you know wall paintings or protest uh, uh, slogans and uh, they adopt them they are also they also adopt the kind of language the scratching uh, the marking and all the uh, uh, visual details that this uh, uh, graffiti uh, speaks and they make it part of their own work manisha and amrita uh, amrita and rabindra singh are two sisters who work together so they they use the language of miniature and in manisha's work here this is actually a pizza but it it can also be seen as uh, you know uh, something that is not from this world so the way it is proposed and the kind of detailing that is built around that and this uh, uh, sing sisters painting is about the 1984 golden temple in the army uh, had to enter the and we will see indira gandhi's uh, image there and she is on a tank and the kind of blood shed that happened so the the theme is very contemporary but it is being narrated in a miniature uh, uh, style or a miniature language is being used and you will see many of the characters who are involved in that uh, struggle this is shantamani's work it's called wave and she relates to the hokusai wave painting we saw in another uh, uh, segment and for her this wave is also like a tsunami wave which is also she also tries to bring in the ecological kind of uh, issues into her work and she also imagines as if 
the, the floor of the gallery is lifting up and then becoming a wave. Again, once you see this work of Shantamani, whenever you think of this, you will also think of Hawke Soy. So, you can't separate them uh, once you have seen that connection. This is Mane's work, it was the execution which happened and then Yi Minjun picks up that image and then he talks about the Tiananmen Square massacre and then this red uh, wall which is very different here. So, he, he again keeps the reference of the, the wall there, but here it is a wall of the Chinese palace and the ironical thing here is everybody is laughing, the people who are going to get killed people who are going to execute them and the observer. So, in that sense there is a, a, a comment that it is like an absurd uh, uh, drama is happening here. But uh, somebody who is staying in China which is uh, you know uh, very sensorial, he has to adopt a language of this kind of ironical uh, image making otherwise it become very difficult for him. This kind of uh, still lives were uh, painted in Europe around 15th, 16th century and they were displayed in the owner's house to show that that person was wealthy. If somebody could eat lot of fruits and lot of meat and uh, uh, you know, very rich food, then it, it became a, a symbol of aristocracy, symbol of uh, power and wealth and uh, they were very realistically painted. It was as, as if you could won't touch them, that kind of uh, 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 treatment was given. And then Sam Taylor Wood, she has created a video, I will just open that video. There is this constant creation and destruction that is going on. You take a sheet of white paper and then you start drawing, you are actually destroying the whiteness or as you are drawing or as you are, you are, as you are continuing the painting, you erase some part and then build up something else or you take inspiration somewhere else, partially you erase that and then build something on its own. So, this movement between uh, destroying something and, and creating new is a, is a constant a cyclical movement in art. I, I like this image because the kind of insight it, it brings to us. Normally, we tend to run away from looking at death face to face. If anything is little rotten, we throw it away. But if you start seeing it more keenly, the kind of insight it can give you is amazing. She has done one more video where the apples are kept and then the apples are rotting and then all the uh, you know microbes come out from that. So, you compare that to the kind of still lives that we do in art school because we are just looking at it as a as a not a living thing, it is not moving. A, a life study class the model will move little bit and then you know we are very uncomfortable because your drawing is going wrong and the apple does not move. That is the only kind of criteria we have and if you start looking at it as a living thing then you have to look more and more deeper into that. So, this is the kind of insight uh, that the that this artwork has given me. So, in that sense it is a very beautiful work for me. It may not be about a flower which is uh, you know blooming and very colorful and all that. The kind of insight it can bring you is amazing. So, some of this other work which I am going to show now is also about the cyclical nature of power or the loss of power. This is Apajaya's work where he has used holy ash that is what we call vibhuti and this sword is put in that. So, little by little the sword starts rusting, you lose power and then you become more and more uh, human in that sense and then in the end the death will catch you. But that is not the end, that is the kind of insight that uh, you know Sam Taylor Wood's um, video gives me. This is also a very interesting 
work in that sense. There is sand here, which is uh, moving. And then as this, uh, this is uh, Tallur's uh, work, and then as the sand uh, uh, moves, the image of uh, Krishna, uh, you know, preaching Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna keeps uh, covering and then it is also uncovered from time to time. And then we saw another work uh, where next to the beach there are many sculptures which are covered and then uncovered. So this, this is the kind of insight that the artist can bring you about how to perceive uh, what is happening around us. Another work by Tallur. This is the uh, Nataraja Shiva. Nataraja Shiva is the epitome of creation. From his uh, dance, the life cycle is created. But here, that is caught in the cement block. And there are coins embedded in that. But if you look at from another angle, it may be a nest from which the next uh, life will come out. And very close to that, you have the Alok Bal work who also speaks a very similar language where the, the clock is frozen and there is no movement of uh, life. This is one of my most favorite work, which I, have, I had seen uh, many years ago in uh, New York. This is a sand pit and in the sand pit, this dial moves. One side is cleaning up and the other side is making lines and it constantly keeps moving. And for me, it's a very philosophical kind of work, which is uh, telling you so much about not just a little bit of movement there, but this constant uh, uh, shifting between creation and destruction, or death and life, renewal and lo loss. So all these connections can start coming through that one work. To end the talk, I would like to make this statement. Socrates has said, unexamined life is not worth living. It means you have to really analyze and then... Uh, so I say the unexamined image is not worth seeing. So if you are not really analyzing the image and then uh, looking at it, it is not worth. And I hope uh, you really enjoyed it and uh, you know, you'll be able to see images and artworks in a very different way after going through these talks. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please press like button. To see more such videos, subscribe to our channel. Thank you.